Tens of thousands of residents and visitors participate in some kind of sport in the Cayman Islands each year, from water sports, fitness training, and running, to one of the many team sports played here. So it's not surprising then that there are people in Cayman who earn their living in a sports-related field. In this episode of the Cayman Sports Documentary Series, we'll look at five people who have chosen careers in sports. Matthew Yates is a full-time sports journalist working for the Caymanian Compass newspaper. Now 27 years old, Matthew first got the idea he wanted to be a sports journalist at around the age of 15. My, my, my career with, with CFP started when I was in high school. I mean, I was in uh, middle school really when the idea to be a journalist hit me to say, you know what, I can write is one thing, but I really love sports. Now how can I get those two together and make a living off it? And then that's what the idea of being a journalist was introduced to me. In today's world of multitasking, sports journalists also need good photography skills, something at which Matthew says he's become much better at. I see, when it comes to my career, photography, how it fits into it, I'd say I'm a writer first. I make no bones about it, I'm a writer first. That's what I went to, to, to university for, University of Tampa. That's what I got my degree in. That's what I'm good at. Photography came through the job. I mean, photographs have always been interested in them. I mean, when you have a great action shot, it speaks for itself, speaks a thousand words. And then on the job, through the experience of actually trying to cover it, then I got better equipment as the years went on and got used to the angles you got to take and all that kind of stuff. It, it becomes second nature. I think I'm pretty good at it. I think um, I'd say I'm, I'm a pretty useful photographer. Being a sports journalist in Cayman is not a nine to five job. In addition to spending 30 plus hours in the office writing and doing other necessary tasks for the newspaper, Matthew spends up to 20 hours a week during the evenings and on weekends covering Cayman's many different sports. For, for sure, the, the toughest part of my job is the hours because, you know, there's a lot demanded of you and you're always asked to go put in a lot of hours, many times above the call of duty to get the job done and get the job done to the best of ability. When he's not covering sports, Matthew spends some of his free time playing sports. I, I grew up here in Cayman, growing up um, doing all the sports like basketball and football and all that kind of stuff. But at this current time, I'm sticking to two sports in flag football and co-ed softball. One of the aspects of his job Matthew likes best is being able to meet people from all walks of life. I've made a, I'd say I've made a lot of friends doing what I do, covering the sports I do. Just simply because of the fact that I'm always there, and a lot of these people do multiple sports, so I get a chance to run into the same faces um, over the course of a week, over the, over the many months, and so on. And um, Cayman is a very social place. I mean, there's so much nationalities mixed in here. I get a chance to meet a whole group of people I probably never would have seen or got in contact with if I hadn't been doing what I'm doing. Matthew believes that sports offer many benefits to the Cayman Islands and its residents. I'd say as far as the, the, the benefits to the Cayman, you gotta look at the, the health aspect first of all. I mean, you know, if you're not doing sports, really what are you gonna be doing to stay in shape? The gym? And the gym gets bored after a while. 
from a social point of view, you know, where there's so much to this animosity between expats and Caymanians and you know, you got this idea, this argument of who's a Cayman and who is it. Sports is really that, that common ground where people of all different backgrounds can come, do something that they love together, and for just that brief bit of time, put all away all of that, all those issues to the side, leave them on the sideline. In my opinion, Cayman would be a much different place, a, I, I dare say a worse place, if sports were diminished and it didn't have the current standing that they do. Although he can't say if he'll remain a sports journalist for his entire life, Matthew has no regrets that he chose the profession. He believes his efforts on the job have made a positive contribution to the Cayman Islands. For me, it's about the legacy I'm leaving. It's about my work going beyond my time doing what I'm doing. And, you know, I like to think as I go about my job that years from now people will look back and say, yeah, that, that Matthew Yates guy, yeah, he made, he made an impact on what we were trying to do here. To, 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 to rewind, I got into this back in the days when there was Tara Bush leading the scene, Guy Harrison on the scene, Alan Ebanks on the scene. And my motivation coming into this whole profession was, you know what, those, those people do a pretty decent job. Let me see if I can do that and maybe do it a little better. And that was my motivation for the, for the opening part of my career. And now when I've done something, I've accomplished something, and I look back and I say, you know what, I think I've, I've, I think I've done all right. Maybe not the greatest, but I've done all right. Originally from Massachusetts, Laura Ribbons has been at the forefront of Grand Cayman's fitness scene for more than 30 years. A teacher by trade, Laura's passion for fitness set her on a course for a career in sports. My career in sports progressed through some great opportunities. Um, first coming to Grand Cayman, um, involved in teaching school at Triple C and doing the sports program there as well as teaching fifth and sixth grade. And then being involved with getting the triathlon started, we opened Cayman Nautilus. Um, Jackie and Donnie Smith was the first fitness facility in Cayman Islands. And that joy of getting people moving was wonderful then. And then I went on my own and I had to make a decision. Do I teach school? Do I continue in a fitness club type thing? And Agnes Cook used to have a little place in West Bay where she had a little yoga retreat. And I thought that was sort of fun to have it at home. A non-intimidating environment where people could feel more comfortable. In 1986, Laura opened Fitness Connection, a small, intimate fitness and aquatic facility in a house in South Sound. Over the years, Fitness Connection has taught residents of the Cayman Islands many forms of exercise to help them stay fit. Well, originally Fitness Connection back at the beginning, 27 years ago, was pretty much just adults, aerobics, and kids swimming. And what happened was people needed, they discovered that they couldn't always jump up and down. They needed a variety of exercise and cross training, so they'd be, uh, their knees and their backs and the rest of their body stay strong. So yoga came into place, we started at offering yoga and Pilates, and dance programs, aerobic dance, circuit training weight training, uh, water fitness. I love to turn people on to how great they can feel and to like themselves enough to take care of themselves. A key element of the Fitness Connection has always been its Learn to Swim program. Over the years, Laura and her team have taught swimming to thousands of people, including babies, toddlers, school children, and adults. The water is 12 times more resistant than air. So it's a built-in weight room and these little babies are in there moving, they're working their muscles three-dimensionally. It's a great way for the parent to spend time right up close and personal with their child and to have that bonding. And the child gets to learn how to go in the water, turn around, go back to the edge to be safe and more importantly, respect that water that they know the most important question, always ask permission before you ever go in a pool or a water area. 
Adult swimming is a joy. Tony Chisholm is here with us teaching adult swimming. That wonderful feeling of taking a fear and stepping, going right outside that fear paradigm and realizing, well, it's not so bad, you know? I just hold my breath, blow bubbles, I can float, I can move. Even now, more and more people, adults especially, want to understand how to, they want to feel comfortable in the water so they can rescue their own, but also because it's a wonderful place to exercise and it's free. We're surrounded by it. And the ocean itself, once they put those goggles on, and whether it's a little teeny child or a grown up, and they put goggles on and look down at what we have under our sea, is magic. magic. Bringing enjoyment of exercise has always been a goal of Laura's at Fitness Connection. In order to have programs that work, especially with kids and adults, you have to have a huge element of fun. There's never going to be a little three-year-old that will say, well, Mom, I did four minutes of stroke improvement with Miss Laura, and then I did endurance. It's either fun or not fun. And same with our karate, with the Pilates, or after-school camps. We actually do these kids' night out, where the parents drop their kids off, pick them up later, and we do dance parties. Once again, expressing themselves, being able to be free, get rid of some energy. Anything we can do to get people to move and uh, use their body's systems together through a modality that gets them to express themselves, sweat a little bit, scream and shout, sing in a choir, it's going to help with our stress level and help our body, the energy in our body flow more smoothly. After 27 years at Fitness Connection, Laura still gets a thrill over what she does for a living. I wake up in the morning and my why, my passion, is to have people love themselves, to be the best they can be, whether it's through just finally taking that final step, putting their face in the water, learning how to swim, competing. How wonderful is that when they finally competed um, in, a, in one of our many different community runs. We have people that have lost over 120 pounds, no operations, no plastic surgery, one baby step after another. They might be once in a while, I really don't want to get a bed, but we have boot camp at quarter six in the morning. And once we start and to get that energy going, I think, you know what I think it is? I think I live off the energy. I think I live off a of positive energy and hopefully pick up theirs and people live off my positive energy and enthusiasm. We meet so many neat people and I'm a people person. I like people, little ones, big ones. And I think if I can learn something every day from somebody and they can learn something from me, I'm going to keep going up that ladder of being the best I can be and hopefully helping someone else. Although Jeff White participated in as many sports as he could growing up on Grand Cayman, he didn't initially see himself in a career in sports. I started with my bachelor's degree. I got a degree in IT, basically, so management information systems. Um, I worked for about a year up in Chicago, and then it was pretty clear that that was not the job for me. Um, I liked computers and things like that, but I didn't really love it, and I didn't think I could have a career in that. So I looked around and started thinking like, all right, what can I do for graduate school? What can I get my master's in that I would really love and be passionate about? And sports were something that, you know, I did my whole life. I love what sports brought to your life, to what it did for a community. Um, and I figured, you know, that would be a great opportunity. I was passionate about it. I always wanted to see where I could go in sports. And then I picked a grad program to study um, sport business management. Jeff went back to the University of Central Florida where he entered a new program that offered a two degree option, one an MBA and the other in sports business management. As luck would have it, an opportunity for an internship at the Cayman Islands Ministry of Sports led to a full-time position after college. The Ministry of Sports had launched the sports consultancy project to have a national sports strategy developed. Um, so when I applied, it was kind of perfect timing. They had just selected the company that would do that project. Um, and I was kind of like the project manager. I think they hired me as sort of a sports development analyst. 
that was just part of what I did. I mean, I helped out in the Ministry of Sports with a lot of everything that they do. They run a lot of different programs there. There's the Elite Athlete Program, so I helped administering that. Um, a lot of different associations and organizations apply for funding to the government, um, so I helped manage that portfolio as well as work through some budget stuff for them. After two years at the Ministry of Sports, Jeff applied for the job as manager of Caymana Bay Sports Facilities. It started off, I was the only person working here, sort of managing the sports field, the 25 meter pool, the courts, um, and the arc was being built and it finished shortly after I got here. There was like a big push to get the facilities used by as many people as possible. Obviously, Cayman International School is a huge um, user of the facilities, but we do rent it out to the general public. It kind of grew into just instead of just facility scheduling and management to sort of a programming creation and development role as well. One of the many sports programs Jeff oversees at Canada Bay is also the one that he feels has made the biggest impact on Grand Cayman. Our biggest program right now is the Canada Bay Aquatic Club and we have anywhere from like 100 to 200 families involved in all the different parts of that. There's a swim school, so that's swim lessons, as well as the competitive club that has anywhere from like 100 to 150 kids each year. For a long time in Cayman, we only had the Stingray Swim Club. Um, we're talking almost three decades worth of that. Um, and it was probably more because there was a lack of facilities. So we built this 25 meter pool here um, at Kamana Bay and it was just empty. So and I knew from working in the government sort of where we were lacking in some facility areas and what sports needed you know, the most help in swimming. Sort of the wait list for the government programs for Learn to Swim was just huge. And so like we were kind of letting the population down by not offering this sort of life skill teaching kids how to swim, so that's kind of where it came from. It was a shame to have an empty pool. Um, I knew that the community could use another swim club, so that was kind of how the idea came about. It kind of grew so fast and so quickly, which was probably an indication that it was needed in the community, um, just to give kids a choice, right? Like, because before, you could be a competitive swimmer or you could quit swimming altogether. But at least now, what we did was we provided an opportunity. You could go swim at the Lions program with the Stingray Swim Club, or you can come swim for the Kamada Bay Aquatic Club and I'm always a proponent of giving kids options and keeping them active so the more options they have the more chance they have of being healthy and active. I think I'm most proud of the Kamada Bay Aquatic Club. Um, if I look at kind of what we've done to create a legacy here in the Cayman Islands that would be it. Here we changed sort of 30 years worth of there was only one swim club and we kind of changed the whole landscape of swimming. In his capacity as president of Seaback Jeff sometimes travels with the young swimmers and he has watched them grow. That's the beautiful part about sports. It's not, they're not going on a swim meet. It's not just a swim meet, just not all about swimming, but it's going to have fun and hanging out and maybe seeing snow for your first time in your life. And that's what the sport of swimming brought for them. Um, and just learning different things, like learning how to travel even, you know, like what I need to do to go through an airport and all these different things. And like, that's the amazing part of what sports can do for kids, you know, it teaches them the things they need to know. That's how you create well-rounded people that will give back to the community. Like most people who have careers in sports, Rhonda Kelly was involved in sports from early childhood. From time I was old enough to, to hit a ball, I played softball. Um, I grew up in the States, my dad coached baseball, my, you know, we, every weekend we spent at the ballpark, so I I grew up playing softball, I played volleyball, I played basketball. Came here when I was 16 and I played basketball, I played on the national softball team. So I was always very interested in sports. Rhonda didn't start her career working in sports, but her public relations job at Cable and Wireless eventually gave her an opportunity to do so. I was working for Cable and Wireless at the time, um, doing their cricket sponsorship. Um, loved it. Loved working on West Indies Cricket Sponsor, that's kind of how I start, got started in sports. In 2003, Rhonda made the decision to form Kelly Holdings Limited with Lorianne Holding. How I kind of came into Kelly Holding was through working at Cape Wireless, doing um, West Indies Cricket Sponsorship. My business partner worked for the West Indies Cricket Board. So we worked together for the few years that I worked on the West Indies sponsorship. And we just kind of started there, formed our company basically to work on cricket. And that's what we've, we've done a lot of in the last 11 years. We've worked on every, almost every West Indies tour since we started the company in 2003. Um, we've also, we worked, did the Stanford, we were the creators of the Stanford Cricket Tournament that happened in 2006 and 2008. 
Um, and then most recently we worked on the Caribbean Premier League, which was across six countries with six teams, um, a tournament involving international and West Indies players. In addition to its work with the West Indies cricket, Kelly Holdings' other major annual event is the Cayman Islands Marathon. Um, well, we started working on the marathon. Um, 2002 was the first one. We didn't work on that one. I actually ran that half marathon. That was my first half marathon ever. Um, and I told Tara Trickett at the time, who was doing it as a volunteer, that I would love to work on a marathon. As an event manager, I think it would be incredible. So the next year, she's like, here, <laughs> there you go. So we took it over in 2003 and we've been doing it. This is our 11th um, one coming up. It's really fun to work on. From an event side, the marathon is just, um, it has so many different elements to it. And it's very different from working on cricket because it, on cricket, um, the athletes are obviously important, but the, when you're working on a cricket event, it's a lot more spectator focused. You work a lot more on the spectator side and spectator experience. Whereas a marathon, it's a lot more about the runner's experience. So they're more, it's more focused on the athlete participation in the Cayman Islands Marathon continues to grow. In 2013, more than 1,400 athletes are expected to participate, including more than 350 visitors who love the experience of running in Cayman. Being a Caymanian, you kind of take your island for granted a lot of times. And whenever people come here and they run through South Sound and you hear their feedback and they talk about what an incredible place we have and what a view and how beautiful it is, you really realize how beautiful it is where we live. The goal of Kelly Holding is to improve the marathon every year. I think for us making the marathon better really comes from details and I think that's important in any event is, is the details and we do after we finish that event we sit down and we do this two-day meeting where we just go through every single thing that happened during the event what went wrong, what went right. And we use that as we're leading up to the thing, remember now, we gotta have this. Remember last year, we didn't have that. Remember that, you know, and it's little things. Like, you know, one of the notes we have in the wrap up meetings from last year is have tissues at the finish line. Because people cry, because they're emotional. And we didn't have any tissues, so we put that down. Okay, we'll make sure we have to, you know. It's little things like that, that we try and cover every single eventuality. That every single thing that every, any runner would, could possibly want, we have. The preparation work done for any event is vital for its success. But for Rhonda, it's the action on the day of the event itself that gives her the most satisfaction. When we worked on the Caribbean Premier League, we did it in a very short period of time. Um, I did three countries, my business partner did the, the other three countries. The average hours sleep was about three hours a night. You know, it was just, it was crazy. But the actual work, it's just thrilling when you actually get the word and you actually see it come to fruition, just like the marathon, when you actually, these people cross the finish line, they've had this amazing time. The work up to it is fine, it's all it's all work, and it, but it's actual being at the event and running around and going a little crazy and getting everything done. And I'm really, really fortunate to do something I love for a living. Penny McDowell has been involved in sports from early childhood in Missouri. It was her love of one sport, scuba diving, which first brought her to the Cayman Islands in 1984. I was a dive instructor. I've always been in the water. I've been in the water since I was six months old, and uh, I always wanted to learn to scuba dive. And in Missouri, there's not that many good places, but um, in the University of Missouri, there was a, an ex-Navy SEAL diver named Billy Bush, and he taught the university course. So as a freshman, I, that's what I did. I fell in love with it. I was his TA for four years and came down here on a vacation. Penny's vacation turned into something much longer when she accepted a position as a dive master, a job she held for five years. Penny then went on to teach swimming and fitness at the Fitness Connection, before she eventually started to teach special needs students at the Lighthouse School. It was there she noticed a glaring gap in the students' learning. I started teaching school at the Lighthouse School, and when I first walked in the door, the first thing that struck me is these, these students are not involved in water, and we're in the Cayman Islands. And I thought this is not right, even for safety reasons. And of course on Sundays a lot of recreation is going to the public beach. And it just made me real nervous that these students weren't getting involved. So I came to the Lions Pool and uh, Dave Kelsheimer was the coach then and I said, Dave, I need a space. And he gave me one, so it was great. Her work at the Lighthouse School led to another opportunity when Aileen Samuels of the Cayman Islands Special Olympics approached Penny. She kind of saw what I was doing with the students and she said, hey, you know, would you like to come do it for Special Olympics? And it was a perfect fit. And I thought it was a great way for the school to grow. 
Penny's efforts have led to programs for special needs swimmers of all ages and abilities. We have all sorts of programs going now. Um, we have three, a three-prong approach, what I call it. We have the students to the Lighthouse School that come in on a regular basis. We have the older athletes that go to the CIS pool on a regular basis. And then I have my own little swim team that they work uh, another day or two with, um, with me on, by myself, so it's, it's wonderful. One of the swimmers Penny coaches is Andrew Smiley, K-Man Special Olympics swimming champion. Andrew was a cutie. He was eight years old when I first got a hold of him. And uh, he just wanted to swim. And he was really good. And, and so he just kind of came along a little bit. And I, so I took him to Ireland to one of the World Games, just as kind of an experience and whatever. And he saw one of the older swimmers get a medal. And that was it. He said, I want one of those. And he was in a very tough division. And I said, well, Andrew, and I said, you got to do your best. It's all you can do and see what happens. He said, no, I want one of those. And he came out with a silver medal. And I would have never guessed that. Seeing the benefits of swimming in her special needs students gives Penny a sense of fulfillment. They grow, they, they meet new people, they gain confidence in every way, shape or form. They are accepted by the swim community here as athletes, which is amazing. They're cheered on by the other swim teams, so it's really good. And then when we go away to, to the bigger events, they're ready for these big events and they're more confident in themselves that they can get up on those blocks and, and do what they're supposed to do. Although she is technically retired from teaching now, Penny's days as busy as ever with her coaching, including doing nine sessions a week with Andrew Smile. Two mornings a week, Tuesday and Thursday, we have to be at the pool at five o'clock in the morning. Um, so it's lucky enough they let me have a lane, I get to do a little swimming on my own as well. Um, but he swims morning and afternoons, uh, again nine sessions a week. So I do that. Um, I work out with Laura Ribbons at, on the boot camp, um, on Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Um, then I have a couple hours in the middle of the day, but I'm busy doing emails for Special Olympics. I'm also on the um, Special Olympics International Open Water Senior Resource Team. So we're working getting open water, really pushing it really big in uh, Special Olympics. And then I do the, um, I do Lighthouse School on the Wednesdays, and I do my own athletes on the Tuesdays and Saturdays, and I do the adults on Saturdays as well. Having participated in sports, worked in sports, and volunteered in sports, Penny McDowell believes sports provide essential benefits to people. Sports is, it just makes us better people. I mean, it, it makes us more tolerant. Uh, even the competitive edge, you know, you learn to accept defeat. You learn to how to roll with the flow. And, and I think everybody needs to do that. Everybody needs to learn to do that. There's a turn on Walker's Road where you come down, you go down to um, Hines Way. You have to go off Hines Way. And she was focused, she was leading in the half, and she had her earphones in, and she didn't, she just ignored the people telling her to turn down the road, and she went past it. So when she finished, you know, the guy comes cycling behind her and says, she didn't turn down Hines Way. So there, you know, she, of course, realizing this, knew it the minute she crossed the finish line, and she burst into tears, and I burst into tears, and it was quite, it was, it was quite, you know, after a while, I've been up for like 30-something hours at that point, and then finally, you know, someone comes up to me, the guy doing the timing, and he says, you're the race director, you can fix this, we can do the mileage, we can prorate her time, we can add her time on, we can fix it, she can still have a qualifying time, you're the race director, and I was like, I am, aren't I? <laughs> I can fix this.